Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Shawls. This week, we're going to start off, at least, with a story that is not quite as sad as the last tale. And we're again going to end the week with a two-part tale. But first off, we have a short story. A tale about, well, how a church was founded by miraculous means. This is The Arrow at Broom. It was in the little town of Prum, many a long year ago, that Lothair, the degenerate son of St. Louis, did penance for his sins. In the church belonging to the town there are two very ancient pictures. One of them represents a knight standing on a huge rock, shooting an arrow, while his wife and retinue are looking devoutedly towards heaven. The other represents a priest at an altar to whom an angel is bringing an arrow. Who is the knight? And who is the holy man? The knight is Nithard, noble lord of Geis who lived in the north of France towards the end of the ninth century. No children having been born to his excellent wife, Erkenfrida, the knight determined to leave his estate for some pious object. He meant to endow a cloister, where after their deaths masses would be read for him and his spouse but it was a difficult matter to select the most worthy from the many cloisters in the neighborhood, and by the advice of a pious priest, he resolved to leave the decision to heaven. He fastened the document bequeathing his possessions to an arrow, and then set out for a great rock near the castle, accompanied by his wife and numerous followers. After a fervent prayer, he shot the arrow skyward, and, so the pious story runs, It was borne by angel hands till it came to Broome, a journey of several days. Hansbald, the holy abbot of the cloister, was standing at the altar when the arrow fell at his feet. He read the document with astonishment and gratitude, and in a moved voice announced its contents to the assembled congregation. Knight Nithard assigned his estate to the cloister, and from that time forth many pilgrims journeyed to Prum to see the arrow which had been carried there by angel hands. The storms of many centuries have blown over those hallowed halls, but the pictures in the old church belonging to the abbey still remain, thus preserving the legend from oblivion. And that is the arrow at Prum, and it is quite the palate cleanser for stories, isn't it? It's so much lighter and shorter and, well, less sad than our previous tale, The Minstrel of Nuanar, and even of The Last Night of Altenar. This is Dan Schultz for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.